Okay guys, time to add the water. Hey guys, it's DT, welcome back to the channel. Today I finally got my custom Weapon X. I think this thing was ready to ship back in January. I was anxiously awaiting its arrival, but it turns out I never paid the shipping. Uh, but luckily the commissioner reached out and gave me a nudge and was like, DT, your Weapon X is ready to ship, you want it? Uh, so I paid the shipping and it just arrived today. So I'm very excited. This is one of my most anticipated pieces. I've seen a lot of collectors posting photos and videos of this piece and I'm very excited to take a look at it myself and give you guys my thoughts. So it comes in two big boxes. Uh, one's a little bit bigger than the other. So I'm gonna open this up, take out all the parts and then put this thing together. Well, let's start off with the big box. All right, so it looks like this has the chamber in it. All right, so here it is. Big acrylic cylinder. I am gonna try and add some bubbles to this uh, later on, so uh, stay tuned for that. Let's get everything out of here. It does have a light up, and it comes with this nifty remote, as well as an AC adapter. All right, so here's the top of the base. Up here is where we have the little connection to the AC adapter. Um, this one actually bolts on and here we have the LED lights uh, The LEDs, it's just a strip light that kind of goes around the top. We've got a sleeping Logan portrait We got the helmeted portrait and then we have the sleeping Logan portrait with the mask on the face Then we've got the body that's attached to this little mechanism right here. Pretty interesting how all of this is connected to his back. Then we have all the little devices and the electronics that are around his body, little tubes. And then we have to connect all these other wires and stuff to these little ports. All right, so here we have an arm with some claws. They're spaced out right now, a little bit weird. Kind of uh, two this way and then one kind of by itself. This one should be centered. Maybe we could heat that up and move it. So here's the other arm. The claws are spaced out a little bit better on this one. Here is a little gauge with a wire. All right, here's a little cover. We got a bolt, I guess a little wrench. Okay, we got a bag with all these little pieces. And I think that's it for this box. Let's see what we have in this one. The main thing we have in here is the bottom of the base. Let's get out the small pieces first. Bunch of these little wires, some other tubing, more tubing, more flexible tubing, more tubing and cable, cables and a gauge, some thicker cables, and here's some more cables and another gauge. All right, so all we have left is the base. All right, this thing is big. All right, so it's big. It's not crazy heavy. Some cool graphics on the bottom. So they made 130 of these. This one is number 105, which is a pretty high addition size for a custom. However, when this thing came out, there was a lot of demand for it. So here are all the parts. Let's go ahead and move some of this stuff. So we can put this thing together. So unlike a lot of statues, which start off with the base and then build up, we are actually starting off with the top and building down. So. First thing we have to do is get this guy connected to the lid of the container. Kind of keys in here. There's a key right here that goes on to the top. Just like that. And then we have to take our bolt, connect it underneath. Tightening up the little nut. Each of these little cables is color coded on one end. the right arm. Here is the left. And then we have all these little pieces that need to be inserted into the little holes on Logan's body. So there are 28 of these little things.
So we used all of those little pegs. So if you have any leftover, uh, you probably missed something. So make sure to go back and check for any holes on this guy. Let's go ahead and give him his portrait. Here's the regular sleeping head. So we got all the wires and tubes connected. The next step is to add this cylinder to the base and then add this guy to the cylinder. But because it's so hard to get to the statue once everything is put together, I'm gonna do some shots of this thing right now uh, so we can change out the different portraits. I'm gonna keep the portrait that I think I like the best and then we're gonna assemble it. But uh, I wanna give you guys a close up look of all this stuff put together as well as see all the different portrait options. Okay guys, so that was a look at the top portion of the statue. Now we need to focus over here with the base. Uh, so we have this big base and then we have this acrylic cylinder uh, and we need to put it on. And that whole thing just kind of slides in like this. Uh, there are some little openings for the tubes which we have to line up. So those are over here. So we kind of have to position it like so. And then we have to attach all these little gauges here, here, over here. These just plug into the little ports. There is a video on this, but I'm just going to guess that this is where everything goes. So then we have the setup. There is a protective film on here. I'm gonna leave it on until I put this thing on. So after looking at the three different portraits, uh, I decided I like this one the best. The helmeted one looks great. However, I already have a helmeted Weapon X and I thought this one was best fitting for this tank. He's kind of in sedation and he's got this breathing mask on. Uh, this one, he's kind of just sleeping, which is fine, but I think the mask kind of makes it. It's not super heavy. Uh-oh. All right, we lost uh, one of these little pegs. Uh-oh, we lost two. Uh, these little pegs, some of them fit in a little bit easier than others. The holes might not be quite big enough, or in this case, the holes might be a little bit too big. The big puzzle with this piece is trying to find all the little holes for these things. All right, and there it is. Um, so. We got the X up here in front, so we can just turn this guy any position we want. The holding just rests on the acrylic, and then uh, we can remove this film. I am going to make some adjustments to it, but I want to show you it without the bubbles first. Now, the only problem with acrylic is the acrylic is more susceptible to scratches than glass is softer than glass so we kind of have to be careful about bumping things into it looks pretty nice uh, we got some glare with the light it, it does look kind of like an empty tank without bubbles um, now I had a few different ideas of how to do the bubbles initially some people wanted this thing filled up uh, with clear resin which would make uh, the interchangeability of uh, Wolverine probably impossible all these wires and tubes would already have to be connected as well, but uh, making this thing one solid block uh, would just weigh too much. This piece is already pretty heavy, so having a full solid piece of resin this big uh, was probably not the best idea. So that's why they didn't do it. Uh, another idea was to create another cylinder inside of the other cylinder and the liquid would just fill in the gaps between the two cylinders, uh, sort of like that those little baby bottles with the liquid in it. I thought that might have been a manageable idea, but again, it would add to the weight of the whole thing. Luckily, I came across these pictures by my friend Barb over at Statue Mania. Um, make sure to check her stuff out. Uh, she does some really great photography as well as some video stuff on her channel. She had some pictures of her Weapon X and it looked great. It looked like the tank had bubbles, there were some bubbles that were on the wires as well. And her option looked a heck of a lot easier than what I was thinking. So I went ahead and got what she got, which 
are these little things. So these are meant for like uh, greeting cards or scrapbooking, just little decorations. They're little uh, dew drops, I, I guess. And uh, they look like bubbles. They're adhesive on one side. I'm not sure if these are 100% acid free. Anytime you deal with adhesives, you want them to be acid free because the adhesive, if it's acidic, can affect uh, whatever it's on. Here on paint, I'm not sure if it's as important, but uh, I'm willing to give it a try and find out. If anything, we can just repaint the statue, right? In order to do this, I think we have to remove the top so we can get to the insides of this thing. And we forgot the little cap, which goes on top. It does have a magnet, so I guess I could stick it on there right now. And let me take this thing off. What I just put on, we have to undo this first. All right, now we can take the cylinder off. So the first thing is we're gonna add some bubbles to the little ports. Uh, it looks like they're hoses feeding into the tube. So that would create bubbles on the opposite side. Uh, that's what Barb and Ohami did. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing because it looked great. So usually when bubbles feed in, there are a lot. And then as they kind of float to the top, they kind of disperse and spread out a little bit. It looks like there are one, two, three, four different sizes of bubbles. I think I got most of the bubbles set up on the glass. Uh, I got some coming out of the little ports and then kind of collecting here at the top. Uh, I got some on the main viewing area as well. Uh, not so much, obviously, but uh, there are a lot of bubbles. I might have gotten carried away. We'll have to see how everything looks. I didn't put a whole lot on the bottom. We'll have to see. Uh, if that looks a little weird or not, but I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, so I'll go ahead and put that up here for now. So I'm gonna put a few actually on the statue just uh, to give it some dimension. That way it doesn't look like it's just on the glass. It looks like it's actually inside the tank as well. And the key with the bubbles is to make everything as random as possible. Uh, you don't want any straight lines. You don't want things evenly spaced. So if you see kind of things very straight, go ahead and add another one somewhere else to kind of break it up. Uh, also, if things are too spaced out, go ahead and put one closer to the other. Also, size-wise, you want to mix the big with the small, and that really helps with the illusion that these are bubbles that are actually moving. Smaller ones are kind of hard to manage. Sometimes you grab them off and the adhesive doesn't really stick. And I'm not sure how well this is gonna hold up over time. All right, then we don't wanna forget the back as well. All right, so I added a few to his body. There's some that kind of fell off. We'll shake those off in a bit. Uh, one thing I wanna do before I put this guy in is remove some of the dust that got in here. All right, I guess that's good enough. Put that thing back on. Line it up. And let's go ahead and stick this guy back in there. Let's shake out those bubbles that fell off. All right, there we go. I might have gone a little crazy with the bubbles, but like I said, we can always go back in there and knock them off if we want. All right, let's reconnect these little tubes. Oh, and it's not actually that hard to uh, remove and then make adjustments and then put it back. It's not crazy. Uh, you just have to basically disconnect those three and lift it off, that's it. And I see a few of the dots have kind of fallen to the bottom, but it looks fine, it just looks like there's bubbles on the bottom now. 
It looks pretty cool. It looks kind of like the idea I had when I was going to put a layer of film in there with bubbles in it. Looking up close, you can tell that there's no liquid in there, but it's definitely better than before at selling the illusion that Logan is actually in some kind of liquid. All right, so the next thing to do is try out the lights. There is an AC adapter. Uh, there's like a little box that plugs into that. If you're gonna plug this into the wall, I think you might need an extension. I'm not sure if this is long enough. Uh, but the main problem is you're going to see it behind this clear acrylic. Now, if this was a solid piece um, that's opaque, uh, you wouldn't be able to see it if you just kind of dropped it behind. But since this is clear, uh, you're going to see it. You're going to see the wire unless you have an outlet above it. I have this little portable battery and there are two outlets there. So I'm just going to plug it in to the top. And these things come in different sizes. Maybe you can find one that's a little bit uh, smaller profile. So we're just gonna lay it on there on top. It is a little bit chunky, but uh, if you display this thing higher up where it's out of view, it'd be perfect. All right, so there's a little switch on top, but before I do that, I'm gonna unplug my main light here. Let's go ahead and turn it on. <laughs> Pretty cool. It's like a light show. Oh, look at that. You can do the fast swirl. <laughs> it's like a little carnival game. So the light by itself is not going to illuminate the front of the statue. Uh, it illuminates mainly a lot of these mechanical parts in the back, the back of his head, but it doesn't really get the front, like his face or his chest, um, because it's backlit. One thing you can do is uh, add some lights on the bottom or uh, possibly just cut yourself a circular mirror and put it on the bottom and it should reflect the lights from above uh, a little better than the paint does. You could probably even put some spotlights on the outside shining through the uh, acrylic uh, if you wanted to illuminate him. All right, so now that I got it all set up, let me give this guy another spin. So here it is, Weapon X in the tank. Nothing like this has ever been done before. It definitely changes the statue game, but it is quite impressive, uh, just the way that it's designed. So starting off here with the base, we have the Weapon X lab. We've got all these tubes kind of flowing into the chamber, some nice rust effects going on here, but uh, some good weathering in some of these other areas as well. Then we have all these gauges with tubes coming out of them. It's pretty solid. I mean, if you push on it, it does wiggle a little bit, but uh, the weight of the top with, uh, with the battery pack uh, should be enough to keep it in place, not going anywhere. I keep finding these little uh, dew drops everywhere. As far as the bubbles go, I, I think it makes a nice effect. I think I added a little bit too many up on top because you can't even see some of them. This part of the lid actually comes down uh, several inches. You can see them a little bit better when you turn the lights off, but I like the effect of kind of the moving bubbles. Looks really cool. So uh, I have to thank Barb and Ohami for the idea. So I like the way uh, Logan is sculpted. Uh, nice musculature. We, we can definitely see the hair on this guy. He's got uh, really nicely sculpted feet. Uh, we can also see all the uh, definition in his legs and his arms. I was able to kind of space out the claws a little better once I heated them up. He's got the belt full of different uh, equipment and monitors, a lot of tubes, a lot of these little uh, injection sites. A few nitpicks, he does have a pretty pronounced seam line uh, on his deltoids where the arm connects. I'm not really sure why they couldn't make this thing one piece or at least uh, assembled it in the factory and then kind of patched up those things before uh, painting. It's pretty compact, so I wouldn't think that his arms would be in too much danger of getting broken in transit. Maybe the claws presented a problem. I would have been fine inserting those claws myself and just gluing them in if it meant that we could have this guy all in one piece without uh, some big seam lines in his arms. But uh, I'm sure there was a reason. Um, a lot of people thought uh, the hair on him was a little bit too dark. You know, I have to agree. 
especially when we were looking at it out of the tank. It did look rather dark, especially the hair on his forearms and uh, triceps, as well as the hair on his chest. Now, you could say that hair gets darker when it's wet. You know, once it's in the tube with lights on it, I don't think it's that bad. Uh, if you have this thing insufficiently lit, it will look even darker. Maybe a different flesh tone, just not the same brown color that reminds people of rotisserie chicken. The portraits do look a little bit on the smaller side, which might mean that his body might be a little bit small. I didn't measure his body to see if he was the right height, but the portraits look a little bit small, especially when comparing them with other quarter scale Wolverine portraits. Here's a Wolverine from the same studio and you can see that this head is quite a bit smaller. I think his portrait looks great on his body, so I guess it's not out of proportion or anything. You're not really gonna pair this thing up with other quarter scale statues, at least they're gonna look smaller anyway because this thing is so big. Uh, it's kind of a standalone piece as it is, so if it's a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger, it's not really gonna bother me. But it's uh, a very cool statue. I gotta find a place to put this thing. Uh, but there you go, custom Weapon X in a tube. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.